This is the most important thing about ICT. There's so many important things when it comes to ICT. And instead of giving you a one hour long explanation, I'm going to cut right into the sauce and give you what I think is the seven most important things when it comes to ICT trading. The first very important thing is definitely daily bias. And the reason behind this is because if you don't have a daily bias or even a hourly bias, depending on, of course, what time frame you are trading on, then it is going to be very difficult for you when you are on the lower time frame to determine if you need to long or short. Now, a quick example on how we can find the daily bias is where we use previous days high and previous days low, and also use different PD arrays. And if you don't know what I'm currently talking about, then I have made a video about this simple strategy to find daily bias. So I definitely recommend checking that video out. Now. Here for the example, we can see that price ran previous days high and also buy side liquidity. Now, when price takes out previous days high and previous days low, we have to look for where price closes at. And if price ran one of the sides of previous days high or previous days low, and for this example, we can see price ran previous days high and then makes a close below previous days low, then that indicates previous day's low for the next day is now the draw on liquidity. And here we can indeed see price came down here, ran previous day's low, and that now indicates that previous day's high should draw on liquidity. For the next most important thing when it comes to ICT trading, I would definitely say the economic calendar. And the reason behind this is because we can use the economic calendar to recognize when the highest probability trading conditions occur and also when the high impact news drivers occur. And here on forexfactory.com, where you can find the economic calendar, we can see that, for example, here on Wednesday at 8.30, high impact news drivers, CPI, has occurred. And when these high impact news drivers occur, we could be anticipating expansion afterwards. I have made a separate video about the economic calendar, so I would definitely recommend checking that video out to get a more overview on what this economic calendar is capable of. One of the strongest ICT concepts is definitely a draw on liquidity, which now leads us to the third most important factor. And you could say a draw on liquidity is a bit of a part of the daily bias as when you are looking for the daily bias you have to have a draw on liquidity now a draw on liquidity is actually pretty simple we usually find them where there's low resistance liquidity and relative equal lows or equal lows and a example of this would be right here we can see that we have perfect equal lows the price targets these equal lows and then after that price builds up low resistance liquidity, then price takes out that low resistance liquidity. And the reason behind a draw liquidity is so important is that we can identify if we need to long or short. So that's where it now becomes a bit of a part of the daily bias. And I have also made a separate video about the draw on liquidity. So check that video out if you don't know what that is. For the fourth place, I would say the ICT kill zones. The reason behind this is because the ICT kill zones can help you recognize when there is volatility released into the markets and when the trading conditions are higher probability. For example, right here we can see that we have the Asian session where price usually consolidates. And if you don't know that Asian session usually consolidates, then you could be caught trading within this Asian session and then there could be low probability conditions. London session, you could be trading, but I prefer not to. And then the New York AM session, that's where there's most volatility released into the market. And that's where you can find the highest probability trading conditions and the large trading moves. How to recognize these ICT kill zones is actually pretty simple. You just go down here to the corner where it says time zone, then press on that. And then it should be set to New York UTC minus four. And the reason for that is because then we can go up here to indicators and then type in ITT kill zones. And then use the one which says ITT kill zones plus pivot TVO. Press on that and then you should see the ICT kill zones. And I have made some custom settings 
and if you want to use these custom settings, you can press on the video up in the corner where I explain everything about these ICT kill zones. The fifth most important thing is looking at a correlated pair, meaning that here on the left side we have the NASDAQ and on the right side we have the S&P 500. So if you're trading on the NASDAQ, you should also have a good eye on the S&P 500 because these pairs are correlated, meaning that NQ, if it makes a lower high, then ES should also make a lower high. But sometimes one of the pairs can make a lower low, creating a SMT. And these SMTs leads to a reversal. For example, here we can see that NASDAQ fails to take out this low, but on the S&P 500, price takes out this low. So that creates a SMT. And when these SMTs occur, a reversal is anticipated. The sixth most important thing is having a strategy or just having a trading routine. Now, let's just say that I were to jump straight into the markets on the one minute time frame and then just start, start trading every IFEG setup that I see, right? And this isn't really that sustainable and it's hard to keep consistent. Now, instead of doing this, you could do a top-down analysis approach where you go from the daily four hour, uh, one hour, all the way down to the one minute time frame, so you can recognize bias. Also having a trading strategy that you find simple and that you can repeat over time. And what I mean by this is, let's say I found this IFG which followed all my trading rules, right? Then the next day I should look for the same strategy and the same setup. Instead of just, let's say I found this AVG and then I took it straight away. Because then it is hard to keep your results consistent. As let's say I have a 70% win rate on this strategy, but whenever I just take a AVG setup, then I have maybe 35% win rate on that strategy. As then it is very hard to keep your results consistent. This now leads us to the last and final important factor, which is called screen time. and Many of you guys may have heard of this. It's basically you gaining experience looking at the live markets. And this may sound also a bit boring, but it is so important when it comes to trading. As when you are building up screen time, let's say you are looking at your strategy play out live market, then you are going to get used to seeing your strategy live market, and then you are going to be better at training your own strategy. Now, the reason I haven't put in backtesting at this last important factor is because I much rather prefer looking at the live markets as when we are trading, we are of course trading the live markets, we're not trading candlesticks moving every second. But of course, backtesting is also very important as then you can test your strategy instead of looking at the live markets, but I much more prefer screen time.